Minecraft Hardcore, where if you die, the game is over. Pure, unadulterated block game brutality. This is the story of how I survived 1,000 days in one of the most unforgiving games on the internet. I wanted a taste of the glory, to stand atop my own mega builds, to have vanquished every foe, and to be the most powerful being in the block game. This project was an unbelievable undertaking as I spent 8 months, 23 episodes of the Hardcore series, 265 hours of gameplay, and over 500 hours of editing to complete. Join me as I tell the story of this epic journey, and please don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel. I spawned into a completely random seed, so there was nothing nefarious going on. When I spawned in, I saw an ocean, a desert biome, and an acacia biome, and soon after found a village. My goal for the first 100 days was to fight all three bosses and establish a base. <laughs> to start out any hardcore world, I like to get an iron farm and a trading hall and a villager breeder going as soon as possible, so that's just what I did. It wasn't really possible to show each and every single day through this playthrough, so I just stuck to the most important ones. You'll see me kind of skip some sections and whatnot. There's also some times I spent AFKing as well as managing this much footage once in a while you lose a little bit, but I just stuck to the most important events. Yes! By day 22, I had finally acquired OP gear and was building my first house. I decided to make it right on the ocean to make it easy to defend from mobs. I then began getting all of the librarians set up so that they would give me the OP books that I wanted. I was starting out with this Efficiency 5 book and eventually getting Mending, Protection 4, and all of the hits. <laughs> Day 25 and 26, I found this pillager outpost that was pretty close to the base while looking for treasure, and I knew I'd be using that later for raids. Then I got the last little bit of diamond armor that I needed, and eventually leveled up an armor to get the pants. day 40 one of the skeleton horse squads rolled up and i was just a little too scared to take it on um, at that point with no totem i just didn't want to risk it so i kind of bailed on that but it was pretty cool super rare <laughs> Heading into 50 days, I realized I still hadn't gone to the nether yet, and with all the new gear I had, I was ready to take on the dragon. So from here, it was just getting those blaze rods and those ender pearls, and then we were off. <laughs> In the 
nether I did spawn in this wall and just happened to choose the right direction, I would have ended up digging both ways, but the way I chose to dig out of just led me right to a fortress. Very lucky, very happy about that. Made some gapples and decided to go get these blaze rods. Wow! As a bit of a meme and a flex, I stayed until I had 64 blaze rods and I got the last I needed to get the eyes of Ender and headed to the stronghold. <laughs> Ah, oh, shit. Here we go again. Yes! 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 On day 61, the dragon was dead, and it was time to go get some elytra. After getting my elytra, I went straight to the nether, got some wither skulls, and fought the wither on day 69. Nice. Immediately after the wither fight, I went to the nearest ocean monument, decided to clear it, didn't quite clear all three guardians, but I got the gold and got some of the sponge. By day 90, I had traded enough to get a full emerald beacon and set up a haste two. Then I decided to start a raid, which didn't go that well, but I survived it and got some totems. I did not actually beat the raid though, so I had to try it again later on in the playthrough. No! 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 Going into 200 days, my first goal was to set up an absolutely absurd auto food farm, which I'm doing here, and then begin working on some of the other resource farms, including a wither skeleton farm. Uh, this whole 100 days was just about expanding the base, and I also took on this bastion, which was almost very bad, and I also got some ancient Debras. First pieces of netherite I used was my pick and my boots, then I got a prop for gold helmet, went back to the bastion, and this was the closest I got to losing this world. Ended up in a hole with a piglin brute, not good. <laughs> <laughs> Despite that close call, I forged ahead and got a few more of the other chests, which included a netherite ingot and another piece of ancient Debra. And then when I went back home, it was time to start building a creeper farm. You will see as this series progresses that my knowledge of the farms start to get better. 
I also got a trident early and was able to get Riptide 3, which is just super, super fun. After that, I went to build my new mansion and work on the Wither Skeleton Farm. Looking for a very specific fortress, I did find another bastion, got pig step, and then an unreal amount of luck happened when I got two skulls from back to back with their skeletons. Then it was time to build this incredible farm by ENX04. I'm not smart enough to explain it, but I was just barely smart enough to actually build it. By day 190, I had gotten cover me and debris and started the big construction on the Wither Skeleton Farm. This thing is very cool. Basically, the Iron Golem has them go aggro and then they walk through a portal and the fence posts are for keeping magma cubes from spawning. Very cool. There will be a link in the description to ENX04. He makes the best farms and this is my favorite farm I have. This farm sends mobs from the nether to the overworld and then back to the nether to the killing chamber. Setting up this part, I was shocked that I got it right, but at first it wasn't working and I had to go inspect. Turns out I had the portal for them to get to the overworld blocked. Once I took care of that, this thing was rocking and rolling and I was addicted to getting wither skulls. To ensure it was even more efficient, I also spent a little bit of time spawn proofing the area. On day 216, I was back fighting more withers, and unfortunately I did lose a little bit of footage, but I got five so I could make an ultra mega beacon, and these were those fights. Yes! Yes! <laughs> This was also kind of a massive waste of time because up to this point I had no other ores to use so I was just trading for emerald blocks and it took absolutely forever. Definitely a flex but going with a better iron farm is definitely the way to go. By 238 I was back to fighting more withers and this time just messing around with golems but I was so OP at this point I didn't really need the extra help but it was super fun. <laughs> I then got to work on my second full emerald mega beacon and this world was starting to get crazy OP. 
uh, spend a little bit of time getting some even more OP gear, and then started my second raid. This raid didn't get off to the best start. I accidentally shot an iron golem and gave them a way to get into the base. Um, I was eventually able to win this raid and get hero of the village with the mega beacons. It, I was basically unkillable by these things, even ravengers who still did a quite a bit of damage. <laughs> Yes. With Hero of the Village, I grinded out every last trade I had and ended up with quite a few emeralds. On day 258, after a few days of searching, I finally found a woodland mansion and proceeded to get just completely bullied by mobs. I was pretty surprised I didn't die in here and really surprised I didn't pop any totems. Nani? I've seen people be pretty casual about these, and I don't know, maybe it's just me, maybe I'm that bad at the game, but these things are crazy, and the mobs just don't stop coming. Got he! I was having a really hard time finding that last evoker and after getting bullied outside a couple times and finding whatever loot I could I decided to just burn this place to the ground because it's nothing but death and misery. I probably missed some secret rooms, but the loot in these are trash. They're not even really worth going out to. I did get a music disc, but it was great to see this thing burn. Got hot tourist on the way back and found another bastion, but I had no interest in dealing with piglin brutes, so I decided to get prepared to build an amazing gold farm. While starting this gold farm, there is a place where you need to put a cactus and I broke a shulker box on it and I was very frustrated with myself, not only for the mess, but losing a shulker. Coincidentally, this is actually a shulker craft build um, for a looting gold farm. We'll put that link in the description as well. And again, I'm not intelligent enough to explain how this works but i was very glad to have the tutorial to follow so please sit back and enjoy a montage of one of the coolest farms i've ever seen complete with a retractable floor
while I was building this farm as well, the Il Mango design, the big circular one where they die in the mine carts, became very popularized. And unfortunately, I had already put so much effort into this, I didn't really want to deal with that. I think with the looting, this one can be more efficient for getting gold, but for XP, the Il Mango one is far superior, which I'll probably build at some point in this world. And speaking of cutting and skipping some footage, I spent a solid 30 to 50 days in Minecraft doing almost nothing but spawn proofing and healing my tools. So spawn proofing for this took absolutely forever and I'm not even done, but you get to see at least a good portion of it here. What I really needed to do was get a mod to show the spawning radius, but I just haven't done that yet, so I was doing that all blind. Eventually I got really bored with it and decided to work on some other stuff, mainly this mega upgraded iron farm, which is just a very simple, very easy design, and it works incredibly well. You have four pods similar to the one I built at the beginning of this world and then they are connected to dispensers which push the items into a collection area. This design is super cool. The only pain is that you have to get 20 villagers because you need five for each module. You also need four zombies with name tags, but once you get all of this set up, this thing cranks so hard. I mean, I rarely have any room for the new iron coming in, and later on in the playthrough, I have about 12 or 13 chests connected to it, and they're always all full all the time. The creeper farm I had made was really not that great and I tore it down. On day 365 I also took a small tour of the world because that was a full year in Minecraft days. It was pretty cool to see all the stuff I had built and how far I had come, but I had plenty of other stuff I wanted to do. So I wrapped up the iron farm and as the villagers finished growing up it began working. Then I started on my brand new trading hall. <laughs> Which would have the zombie curing option because the first trading hall I made did not have that option really. The villagers gave me nothing but headaches through this process. For whatever reason, I can't remember, on day 374 I started fishing, got an oxalotl, and made my helmet super OP. The trading hall was coming along and I even got a cat, Earl. He would be my best friend.
Heading into day 400, I was working on an upgraded creeper farm and overall mob farm. This thing was absolutely sick. It was about 11 layers tall and cranked out gunpowder, which I didn't really have before. And then to start out 500 days, I set up a mega beacon just for killing withers. Got an army of iron golems and started to try to fight these things two, three, and four at a time. The first withers spawning in nearly killed me, popped a totem, and killed most of the iron golem. So that wasn't really working out, and I was still really timid. Not knowing that at this point I could just eat their punches and fight them three on one, four on one. So eventually I figured that out and I wanted all of the beacons. Starting out fighting them two at a time and just meleeing them the whole time with the jump boost and the regen, I figured out that I was now a wither killing god. So, a little homage to Luke the Notable who created this series. I think he would enjoy that scene, but we're just going to pretend that didn't happen as I move on to starting to drain this ocean monument. As far as cutting some of the footage or moving around a little bit, I did it the most here just because this project was absolutely insane. Draining this monument and setting up this glass staircase from the ocean floor to the surface. This took about 65 hours. Uh, it was about three or four episodes of the hardcore series where I go into great depth on that if you want to watch those. This project is incredibly tedious and boring, but it is also very dangerous, and on 469, nice, I almost died. Yep, they really almost got me there. After the totem was popped, I was still being targeted and I couldn't get out of that water. So that was even closer than it looked, but I made it to day 500 and then popped a few more totems while doing the sand project. On day 571, I found there was a slime chunk in the middle of this, which was gonna be huge for me later on. Still haven't gotten to it, but I will make a slime farm. And on day 572, it was all done. At least the draining on top and around the edges. I still had to drain underneath and on the side, and especially underneath was incredibly dangerous. I nearly died twice, but specifically there was a time where I could not get out of this little area, this little hole, and I really thought it was over there.
Once I had finished draining, I started hauling out the main part of the monument and started building my own guardian farm. Now, I did get this design from Wadzi. Um, I don't think he put a lot of effort into it because uh, it's not n definitely not optimized, but it works pretty well. Essentially, you have soul sand, you get some water above it, and then you use kelp to make those source blocks, and then it pushes them all into the middle where they fall into a killing chamber. Once you get to this part where the kelp hasn't been done yet, though, this is dangerous, and you need to use potion of invisibility and just hope nothing happens. Before finishing the guardian farm, I did want to get some more beacons for the monument build, and so I set out to fight a few more withers. Now that I had my beacons, I began terraforming this build with a jungle theme. I think it looks absolutely amazing, and this was a lot more mellow than anything I was previously doing. <laughs> with the bit of sea lanterns I was getting, I started doing these really cool staircases, probably one of my favorite parts of this build, and that kept me occupied for quite a bit more time. Once I finished these staircases though, I went to AFK for some more sea lanterns and I accidentally fell asleep in real life and left it AFKing for about 8 to 9 hours, which brought me to into day 700. So once I accidentally AFKed to day 720, a lot had changed in my life leading up to this. I was able to start streaming finally by getting some better internet and I spent about two, three months getting my streaming channel set up and doing a brand new hardcore series in 1.18. I ended up losing that 1.18 world while streaming, so naturally I decided to just come back to this one. That's why you'll see I am streaming. Started out with this tunnel project that would lead to the new mega base and was just really excited to be back in this world. For the bottom of this mega base, I wanted to have an absolutely massive auto sorter room, so I started to get to work on that. Needed a lot of cyan dye, so I decided to build a cactus farm as well to get the green dye. And from here on out, it was just really grinding out the mega base. For the auto sorter room, I knew it was going to be just this big dome that went from wherever it started up to the ocean surface, and this project 
took quite a while. I almost messed it up really bad, and you'll kind of see me go over that, but place one bad block at the beginning of this build and it almost ruined the entire thing. kind of an easy, cheap way to fix it. <laughs> it's like growing, but it, it looks okay. I don't know, because then that's just gonna keep happening all the way down. But I wouldn't be too impressed. Your man can't even build basic geometric shapes. All right, kids, here we go. This is what pure Minecraft suffering looks like. I know it's insane. It's insane that one single block could just destroy a build like this. But wait, it, it looks like things might be turning around here. I can lie, I was real worried. Oh my god, that's sick! Once I had fixed the dome, it was time to start working on the inside of this thing. I wanted the entrance from the tunnel to have a big set of elevators where you could just walk in and get brought right up and down. And this thing worked out pretty well. Then it was time to drain the tunnel and the dome. I thought this was going to take super, super long, but to be honest, it really wasn't that bad. Wow. <laughs> wow, this place is nuts. Now with everything drained and the elevators in place, it was time to start working on the floor and putting in this auto sorter, which was going to be massive. If I counted correctly, I believe it's about an 80 item auto sorter. I began putting the chest in and this was just kind of a rough outline. I was going to have to change quite a bit once we were done, but at least this allowed me to start doing the redstone. This is basically the most popular design for auto sorters that you'll find on YouTube and stuff. I'm not sure who initially came up with it, but you have hoppers on the back and then this redstone system that allows it to sort everything. You have repeaters that help the comparator and hopper feed stuff in and then the comparators have a hopper going into them and I believe that's how it starts to auto sort. For the delivery system, I decided to go with a water based system. Some people don't think this works or think that it's too fast and items end up in the overflow. I think there is some truth to that, but it also allows you to not have to get a million hoppers to finish one of these. So basically the water source brings the items all the way around and as they go over the hoppers for their respective items, they get pulled through. As far as getting the items into the water, you will need a dispenser system, which is what I'm building here. 
once I finish this, there's a chest connected to it. And as you put items in, they just get spit out and brought along in the water channel. Did that work? You're gosh darn right it did. Yee. Once I had closed up the delivery system, it was time to get sorting. So I named some filter items, which if you name them, they won't go straight through. And then I started putting in a stack of each item I wanted sorted. And most of this was going to be building materials, but I also did some of the treasure stuff like gold and diamonds and all that kind of stuff. I also put in the overflow chest where anything that can't be sorted would end up. Now this took quite a while for a lot of these materials I had to actually go out in the world and collect enough of them for whatever ones I already had enough I put those in first but I tried to keep it organized with a nice layout and I was constantly having to get more filter items but this process was just me getting items bringing them back and making sure they went where they needed to. Mr. Lazy thank you for the double. I am going to sort gapples though because I'm just so OP. Mr. Lazy doesn't carry apples, so this one's for him. That's how OP I am. I can just eat five gapples, no problem. I wanted to sort Enrod, so I went back to the end and lag almost killed me. Oh my god, that scared me. I thought I was going to lose the world to lag. It was not cool. Uh, my heart is pounding right now because of that nonsense. Uh, I don't want to go in here. I like can't believe I'm coming here just for the stupid the stuff. What, is this a ship I haven't been to? Yes, another pair of elytra. I will take it. Ooh. Ooh. Wow, seven. Wow. Wow. I don't want it. I don't want it. It's looking spicy. Oh my gosh, please. We're in a little bit of danger here. Wow, this gear is just OP. Oh, don't like the lightning either. Go sleep real quick. Ah, uh, see? By about day 830, I had pretty much every item sorted, but four of the slots were messing up because I messed up the redstone on the back trying to squeeze too many of them in. It took me a while to figure out what was wrong, but once I did, uh, it, everything was done. Wait, what? Okay, I think we are ready though. Let's start dumping a bunch of garbage in here. And I'm going to start with quartz because it's like all the way on the other side. I want to see if this is going to work or not. Oh, it just barely gets over that part. Wow, that's awesome. I love, love auto sorters. Oh, I'm so obsessed. Oh no. Wait, why was this in there? Did I not? That's supposed to be gunpowder. And why is this? Oh my gosh. What is that? Oh, y'all want to see this? Pretty cool. Are, are you not going to get struck by lightning? That's cool. 
Now this had to be one of the horses from my first encounter with these way back on day 40 and I was so happy to get him back to my base as a pet. <laughs> nice. Alright, you live here now, bud. Don't y'all make babies now? What the hell? I thought that's how you made baby llamas. Started putting item frames everywhere. I was actually putting them on the wrong part. It needed to be upper. But eventually I got item frames on everything. Started getting everything organized. Got a bunch of cyan concrete. And was slowly wrapping this project up. Then I finally figured out what was wrong with the auto sorter and fixed it. Well, no, it's not the torch part, like they both have their own torches. I just, I knew this redstone signal couldn't be going to two different ones. <laughs> Can't believe I'm having to do this. It's so sad. Beautiful though. I'm so glad we fixed it. It's starting to look good in here. It's actually working. Next, I realized how much concrete I would be going through on the mega build, so I built a concrete making machine. Um, this thing is great, but you always got to remember to put your totem back, which I did not always. Oh my god, I'm so dumb. Okay, now this should work. Oh, it works. Beautiful. With the auto sorter room finished for now, I started building the tower that would go up to the brand new mega base. This was going to be the permanent base for me and I wanted it to be extremely luxurious and very OP. Yeah, that is going to look cool. I was going to need a ton of black, purple, and blue concrete to get this started, and once I got up there, I made just an absolutely gigantic circle and went from there. Now if I did this right, one, two, three, four, five. Okay, beautiful. I actually did that right. First try, beautiful. I went up six or seven blocks and repeated. I was just getting the basic outline before I put a roof and a floor in on this thing. I'll be very surprised if I have enough materials for this. Uh, yeah, so that looks pretty good. Then when you're over here at the mine, you can look over oh my gosh, this is insane! Beautiful. Awesome. Got an elevator going up from the auto sorter room and an area to drop down and then put some glass on the outside. And I'm going to come back to the roof here and do some uh, sea lanterns as well. 
thing was so big and so dark, some mobs even spawned as I was finishing it, which I did not appreciate at all. As I was saying, I wanted this place to be OP. I wanted it to have its own sugarcane farm on the inside since I'm always going to be over there or spending quite a bit of time over there as well as its own creeper farms just so that whenever I'm at home, I'm getting fireworks made. So I put in a couple sugarcane farms and they actually work really well for being kind of small. Then I started on probably what is my favorite little bit of this base is that you have a dispenser that connects to the auto sorter way up by the top of the base so you can drop in items up there or down below. Ah, ah. Wow, I gotta stop doing that. That was almost another totem. Oh my God, that's so epic. Oh, that's so amazing. Items going up there or items going over here. Doesn't matter. God, that's epic. On day 9-12, I started adding some coral reef around the bottom of the base, which I think looks really good. I am going to expand on this eventually, but it's a ton of work. Oh my gosh, wow. Then I started on some automated potion brewing things and this kind of got funky real fast. Dang, they actually kind of do some hearts. I didn't really need to pop that gapple, but I just thought I'd get meleeed super bad right there. God. Bruh. So you need fire as like hello, can I get out of here? Jesus. That was so sketchy that I was getting legitimately upset there. It's like out of the lava, it won't let me fly, won't let me place a block. Wait, what? What? Hello? <laughs> wait, wait, why? Stop, stop. I hope this isn't like for like bedrock or something <laughs> oh no oh my god i think this is for bedrock that's uh that's super embarrassing one of these other guys survived too oh i need to get another saddle though armed with a new design that was actually for java which i'm still embarrassed that i built a bedrock build while streaming i proceeded to make about four of these really cool automated potion brewing things. Okay, wow. Well, he said the first time you'll just get water bottles back, and that's what happened. Yes, let's go. Oh, this thing is sick. Yes. Oh my god, this thing is so epic. I'm gonna watch the whole thing. Oh, nice. And you can just add on to this thing too. Wait, and then do you push the button? Oh, that's pretty sick. Now that I was done with that and had plenty of fire res, I went to build my own blaze farm. Done one of these before, uh, I kind of messed this one up, but it does work. Look fresh, cream fresh. <laughs> Look at all these things. 
Oh no, I made this like one too long or something. Yay, 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 yay. I'm on the blazes. Yes, though, it's working. What are these? I think it's just like this, right? Okay, well this thing isn't perfect. I'll probably be able to fix this at some point. I just, I don't get um, why the lava isn't flowing exactly where I need it to. So the blaze farm could be more efficient. The lava needs to flow in a different way so that they always all fall in there. Uh, that being said, I still have access to unlimited end rods, which is super cool. A lot more lighting options for my builds. And also, it's pretty decent for XP, and just having a ton of blaze rods is awesome. Oh, wow. My time hunting squid, I had gotten a couple tridents. I wanted to get those, one with impaling five and one with the riptide. I also started working on getting a new bed set up, the concrete maker and the enchantment table all in here, mostly just because I needed to fill this space with stuff. For the automated potion brewers, I wanted one for fire res, one for strength, one for weakness, and one for night vision. And I put all four of them just up here in the mega base. This will be sweet. We're going to have basically potion vending machines in our house. Super, super cool. Gosh, that's so sick, actually. But but wow this thing looks super cool <laughs> for a uh, concrete maker leading into day 969 nice i wanted to get a turtle helmet so i started working on a turtle farm to collect their scoots You have your turtles up there, you have a spot only the babies can crawl through, and then as they grow up, their shells get put into the hoppers. So I have my night potion ones in here, push the button, they get pushed in here, and then look at this. The ingredients like fall down the cobwebs, and because of that, they get put into the brewing stand in order. It's so cool. My next project was getting beacons for here, and I wanted them all the way at bedrock, but when I was preparing concrete, I forgot to put my totem back into my offhand, so this was just unbelievably dumb. I'm so disappointed in myself for even allowing this to be a possibility to die like this. torches. <sighs> 
That's still scary. <laughs> Scarier than I even knew, considering I was unaware I didn't have a totem with me. If anything had happened and I had died that way, I would have been so upset with myself. But here I am, looking around in caves, just being a general dumbass without a totem, and luckily I survived all this. Amidst all this, I found a mine shaft that had just an absurd amount of diamonds and a couple spawners in it. It was one of the most OP mine shafts I'd ever come across. Now this cave was where things got really spicy and keep in mind, especially fighting this creeper, I didn't realize I didn't have a totem, but I also didn't even have a shield. So like just letting him explode could have killed me and then hopping up into this amethyst, getting cornered by two of them, it was just way too much risk. Uh, la la la. Eventually I placed my final beacon at bedrock, went up to the surface, placed a couple more, and checked on the turtle farm. No shoots at all? That can't be. Now you have hoppers just everywhere. Gonna get this trident healed up, we'll get a few levels, and we'll get riptide on one of the tridents, and get this other one to loyalty 5. Oh wow. <laughs> Channeling, huh? Should have done this a long time ago, but I got an enchantment table at the gold farm and finished these enchants. There we go. There we go. No, no, stop getting out. RIP to the babies who got out. I'm getting one of you. One of you is growing up right now. Just if it's not. Wait. Yes, yes, he grew up. Okay, beautiful. Boom. Super legendary Minecraft turtle helmet. XP. Oh my god. What? <laughs> Literally just a perfect one. Pog champ, dude. Let's go. Wow, that's ridiculously OP. Oh my gosh. I'm a sniper. Yay. It's amazing. Scoop farm was now working and I got another backup helmet and then I started uh, to get prepared to do a creeper farm and build three of them adjacent to the tower. These would run all of the time and eventually I connect them straight to the auto sorter. So, but let's go. 1,000 days. Here we go. Uh, let's go. We've got our epic monument project. That was super fun. Um, and then kind of just the base, the iron farm, the old creeper farm, all that good stuff. But here we are, day 1000. I am so, 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 so stoked. But it is amazing to be at day 1000. Oh, <laughs> almost just popped a totem. 
Yep, GG's. Thank you so much. Really appreciate all the people who have uh, been tuning into the stream. How I got to a thousand days. That's on my YouTube and the hundred days series playlist. After I was done celebrating in the moment, the accomplishment of a thousand days, I got right back to work grinding out the rest of this creeper farm. I wanted at least one of them done before I did this edit. I know I went over to day 1006, but I had to. Oh my god, there's a creeper up there. Oh yeah, and I see some gunpowder. Beautiful, amazing. And there it was, my 1000 days edit. When I first started this channel, I never thought I would make it this far in a hardcore world, and I certainly did not think I'd be getting the opportunity to do something like this. The builds, especially later in the world, are starting to get to a point that I never thought I'd be capable of doing. I've learned so much about Minecraft, so much about streaming, so much about YouTube, met a ton of great people. And I feel like I'm really starting to have something to show for all my hard work. So if you have supported the channel, I want you to know that from the bottom of my heart, I love you and thank you and appreciate it so much. Thank you so, so much. I hope to see you in the next one and please like and subscribe to the channel.